So this week's parasha, parasha Shlach. So we have a story about the spies. And related to the spies is the last part of the parasha. The last part of the parasha speaks about the mitzvah of tzitzis, which, how is it related? So it's interesting. We'll read the, we'll read the words. I'll show you an interesting allusion, one of, the, uh, one of the ways how it's related to the spies. So the first verse says in uh, Perak Tesvav, Pasuk Lamed Ches, Lamed Zion, which is uh, page 816. So it says, no, right, you got Pasuk 37. So Shep said to Moshe, Dabr al Bnei Israel, you should speak to the Jews of Ramat Aleim and tell them the Oslem Tzitzis, they should make Tzitzis. Al Kanfe Big Deim. They should make Tzitzis on the corners of their clothes. The Dairaisam for all generations. That means that this mitzvah will be for all the generations. Now the first question is, what does it mean? You should make tzitzis on the corners of your clothing. What, what is the, how do you read the words? What does the word mean? You should make tzitzis. So we understand tzitzis to mean strings. And that's the way, uh, that's the, the, the meaning here that Rashi brings, that the word tzitzis means strings, literally. And therefore it says you should make these strings on the corner of your clothes. And it brings a, brings a verse to back that up. Okay, and then he says further, the, the verse says, and you should put these tzitzis on the corner, out tzitzis, you should put on these tzitzis, the trellis, when the, in the times when we used to have the blue, so you put the blue on the tzitzis, and then you would wrap it around. But now we don't have that blue, according to most traditions, so we don't do that. Let's go further. Now this is, uh, this, right, this is the part that we read every day, this is the last part of Shema. You'll see there are three parts to Shema. So we read these verses, these, right, these last, uh, how many psukim, these, these, these four or five psukim, we read these every day. This constitutes the third part of the Shema. Now, the reason we read the Shema, we, the reason we do read this whole part is because of, that it will re- mention the leaving of Mitzrayim. So therefore we want to uh, get that mitzvah. There's a mitzvah every day to mention once at night and once in the morning. You see the top pasuk on the next page, uh, the, sec- the last pasuk. Ani Hashem I'm your God that took you out of Mitzrayim. So there's a mitzvah to remember every day that Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. And therefore, do you get this mitzvah by reading that verse. So therefore they put in the whole portion to be the third part of Shema. That's how you get that mitzvah in together with Shema. Shema is a separate mitzvah. A separate mitzvah is to say Shema every day, once in the morning, once at night. But they join this part together to, that way to make sure the person, you won't forget to say Shema, so you'll also be able to say those words that Hashem took me out of Egypt. Now, here's an illusion. Let's see the Pasuk Lama test for one minute. And they will be for you for tzitzis. You will see the tzitzis and you will remember the mitzvahs of Hashem. The idea of tzitzis He's saying is that when you see them, you'll remember that there are 613 mitzvahs. How will you remember? Because the numerical value, one, one idea is the numerical value of the tzitzis, tzaddik, is how much? Right? If you go in the Eighty? alphabet, aleph is one, base is two, is gimel Eighty? is three. Once you get to ten, you go by tens. Yud is ten, chof is twenty, lamid is Thirty. mem, forty, nun. 50. Uh, 60. Known as 50. Known as halfway point. Samach is 60. Ayin. 70. Pei. 80. 80. Okay, let me guess 80. <laughs> and Tzadik. 90. Tzadik is 90. So Tzadik is 90. So you got Tzadik is 90. And you got two, two Tzadik in the word Tzitzis. So 180. And you got a Yod. Yod is ten. when, when you, it's 10. So Tzadik Yod, Tzadik. So that's so far 90, 90. 190. 190. 200. 200 there. 190. Right. And then you have, uh, there's another, there should be another yud there because it should be spelled Sadik yud, Sadik, Sof. So that would bring it up to 200. That would be 200. Then you have the tough in the end of the word. 200. Tough in the end of the word, that's the last letter of the alphabet. How much is the tough, the last letter? Yes. So if Kuf is 100. It's 400. Reish is 200, Shin is 300, Saf is 400. 
So they put the stuff in, you add it up, numerical value is 600. Then you put the, uh, you count up how many strings there are. So for each corner, there's eight strings. Here's four, here's four, eight. And you have, each corner is eight. And then you count up how many knots there are. One, two, three, four, five, five knots. Five groups of, uh, of a knot, knot, a knot here. One, two, three, so there's five. Five knots, eight strings, that's 13. And the 600 of the numerical value of titsis. That will remind the person of the 613 mitzvahs. That's why the people even wear them outside of their pants, because that way they'll see them, because the whole idea is, or so you should see them. That's what it says in uh, verse Lamentes, right, 39 here. It says that you should put them on the corner but of your, of your garments, and you should see it, and that should hopefully re- remind you that you have to do the mitzvahs. And it will be like a little reminder. It's, it's a badge that, that Hashem gave us, and then he'll, uh, he'll make sure not to go against any mitzvah. Yeah. To, you said uh, we say Shema Yisrael morning and night time. If somebody says it 50 times during the day, Nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it because it's, that it's Shema is also part of the Torah. Shema, we're going to come in a few weeks. We're going to see. I know people who do. Every time they get scared, they say Shema. Oh no, that's right. that's pretty common. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's also but, good. Um, that's also good to do. Shema is also. We're going to read in a few weeks. The Shema is right here in the Torah also. Right. But you only get a mitzvah so once in the morning question. and once at night. It's but if you remember the going out of that Hashem took us out of Yisid Mitzrayim 50 times a day, is it? You get one mitzvah. One once in the morning yeah. and once at night. Okay. It's a one-time opportunity of, of a mitzvah. Once in the morning till, let's say, 9.30. So that would be 9.30 is well, the end of the, yeah. depend on each yeah. each day, but like around now, let's say you have till 9.30 to just say that first verse. Mm-hmm. Really, from the Torah, all you have to do is say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekin Hashem Echad. And that's your mitzvah. You got a mitzvah right there. You say you should whisper bar of shame kavod mal so low and wet. And that's that's really what you need for the mitzvah from the Torah. And if you say this first, you get another mitzvah. You say Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. You got another mitzvah. So that's what you do. You're wearing tefillin, then you get three mitzvahs at one 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 time. All before you have breakfast. Yeah, that's that's great. Okay, so those are. The, but you only get it once. Once you okay. get it, then you already got the mitzvah. And at night is the same thing. Once it gets dark, you have it till midnight. You could say the same thing. You, you should say the same thing. Okay, now, the, what's interesting here is that he says, you should remember the mitzvahs. And the next part of the Pasuk says, and Vasisim HaSem, you should do it. You should do all the mitzvahs. And that will help a person that he should not stray after his heart or after his eyes. And his heart will give him different ideas different uh, heretical ideas or anything that the heart is, is, would, would uh, bring up. And the eyes will bring him, they should, you should live, the eyes are the main, what we call the middle man, to bring a person to see something, so bring him to do a sin. So therefore we, 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 wanna, we want to see this, and this will uh, help a person from straying after his, his eyes or his heart, or his heart. Because that, that's what they say, the, the best way to, uh, to fight is with your eyes. If you don't see anything, then you don't have any uh, desire for that thing. Okay, so that's the verse. Now, this is, this is counted as, as a mitzvah here. To make tzitzis is one of the 613 mitzvahs. I think it's even counted, uh, if we have the chinuch uh, here, this is counted as one of the 613 mitzvahs. To make tzitzis? Yeah. To, to wear tzitzis, oh, not wear, to make. Okay. Right. Now we're going to see the, the uh, we're going to see the Gavar about making about making tzitzis now, but to make is not is not part of the mitzvah. Here, let's let's look at this Gemara here. I copied it so, uh, so we can read it up. So the this is a Gemara that's in uh, Menachos. So the Gemara states, Rabba Bar Huna. There was a fellow, his name was Rabbi Barhuna. And he, Ikla Lebei Rava Bar Nachman. Bar Nachman. He went to the house of Rava Bar Rav Nachman. Chaz Yodahavi Mechasi Betalus Kefula. This Gemara is on Daf Mem Aleph Amad Aleph. 
What happened? Chazia, as he went to the house of Rav Bar Rav Nachman, he saw the Rav Bar Rav Nachman was wearing a folded over garment, which means that the talus was, he bought a, a garment which was much too big. So what he did is he just folded it in half. And then this was more of the size that he needed. So he puts it this now. Now he's supposed to put it on the corners. The question is, where are the right corners now for this garment? Which means when you have a regular garment, you just put it on the four corners. One, two, three, four. Now he said, it's too big. He folded it over and uh, he was wearing it like this. He put it on wearing it folded. So which, where should he put the four sitters? So two is, right, seems very, right. What would you say? What do you think? Well, I, I still put them at the four corners. Which four? One, two, three, four. Oh, so you got four new corners. He, well, two of them, some of them were. These are now, new, these are two new corners now. Yeah, yeah, two of them are new, two of them are old. Okay. Now, the question will be, like, hopefully this won't open up, because if, if the garment opens up, so he's going to be wearing it with one, two, three, four. So there'll be a middle of the garment that won't be on the corners anymore. That's like saying if your garment tears, then it won't be either. Well, if it tears, that's, that's a whole new story. If it tears, then, then you have to see how it wear a tour if you still have corners and everything. Well, right, but that's the same as once you fold it to wear it like this. She's saying, as long as it's folded, it's folded. Well, that's how you're wearing it. Yeah, right. Okay, but make sure it doesn't unfold, I'm saying. Yeah, because then, well... If it unfolds, then, then, then you're going to end up with sitsis in the middle of the garment, like, you know, smack in the middle of, uh, of your shoulders. That's where there's going to be sitsis popping out of the back of the garment. Yeah, but I think, I think it's the same as if you have a, something that's double-lined. Like, if you had, you know, something that was double lined, it opened, it tore, it opened up. Now it's different than it was before. Yeah, but there, but, yeah, but there we, we wouldn't uh, be, be suspicious to say maybe it's going to open up if it, to tear because as long as, you know, we it's don't... It's sewn. Sewn. And this is just folded. Right. Right. So let's see what happened. So he walked in, Rabba Bar of Huna walked into Rabba Bar of Nachman's house, and he saw that he was wearing a folded garment. And not only that, the Rami Lechuti Ilave Kefila. He had put the tzitzis at the corners of the crease, like Kevin just said. He put on the corners. So if shita ve'asachuta v'kam lahadei. So what happened was the garment actually became unfolded, and the tzitzis threads came up, right? And now all of a sudden, instead of being on the corner, now they came into the middle of the garment, which they didn't move anywhere, but they just now they were middle. So. What happened was Rabbi Baravuna was uh, he was stunned because he saw he said well, what are you doing here you can't wear tzitzis in the middle of your garment. Amar lay lav hainu kanaf. This is not kanaf. Where does the word kanaf come from? Kanfot. Right here we go in this week's parsha. You put the tzitzis al kanfei big dayim. You put them on the corners. Then al snoal tzitzis ha cut off. You have to put them on the corners. So he said to Rabbi Bar. Rav, Nach, Rav Bar of Nachman, he said, you, you're not putting it on the corners. The cause of Rachmana, this is what the merciful one that, the, that Hashem said, the Arisa, he wrote in the Torah, that you should put it in the corners. So what are you doing? You're doing this wrong. He, because it, it, the talus does move around when a person's wearing it. So it, it slipped down and the fold, uh, you know, it unfolded. So he was wearing it and it was, uh, the tits were not in the right place. So Asa, so Rav Bar of Nachman, he came, and what he did is shadya. So he took off the garment quickly, he threw it off, and put it on the table. And a chasi glimachrina. And he put on. He took a different garment because this was a problem, problematic garment. Right? So far, so good. Amar le. So Rabbi Aravuna says, said to him further, misavris misavris chayvas gavrahu. Do you think that tzitzis is an obligation on the on the person? It's a personal obligation? That what? Do you think that you fulfill your mitzvah by wearing the single one, one, one four-corner garment that has tzitzis on it? And the question is, that means, do you think that because it's on the table, so now you're okay? Which means you're, 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 you seem to be implying that it's only when you're wearing it. If it's in the box, it's in your closet, so then you're allowed to have a four-corner garment without tzitzis. It's only when you're wearing it. That, that's what Rabbi Bar 
Rav Nachman seemed to have been holding because he took it off, but he still had the titus in the middle of the garment, which is not the right place for it. So what's the answer? How, how is he allowed to have a garment sitting on the table without the titus in the right place? So what did Rav, Rav, Rav Bar of Nachman hold? He must have held that... What's it? What's it's still it? That what? That it's still usher, even though you're not wearing it. Who, who held that? The one who took the, it off? The, the visitor. Oh, the visitor held. But what did the one who took it off held? He kind of thought it might be okay if once why, it's off. Why? What was his reasoning? That what? Because what he, he wasn't wearing it, I guess. Because he only wasn't wearing it, right? Rav Rav Nachman said, I'm not wearing it. It's only for when you're wearing. It's a personal obligation. When you're wearing a four-corner garment, you have to put on titus. Actually, from in that Torah, what does it say? It says on four... It doesn't say specifically when you're... It says clothing, right? Yeah. On a four-corner garment, but it doesn't specifically say dafka when you're wearing, does it? No, I don't mm-hmm. think so, right? It doesn't say. You see, that's, that's where the problem came up. Right. That's where the, right. the disagreement came up. Because all the verse states is that you should put it on your garment. So does that mean in the garment in your drawer? Or does that mean the garment they're wearing? It also doesn't say four-cornered garment. But that's understood, huh? The, w- the place where we learn... Uh, now, that could be from a different place. I'll show you where that is. Here. Yeah, it's a different place. It's on page 1050. On uh, page 1050, there it states, uh, uh, the, uh, the second place in the Torah describes tzitzis, it says you put it on the four corners. So, do you want to look so that's that why up? if you have a six-corner garment, you're not obligated to put it on? No. No, that's not true either. No? Because the, the, uh, the words are coming to include, it says in this verse, if you look up page 1050, there it says clearly that you should put it on a four-corner garment, which covers you. So we learn out from the fact that it states those extra words that they cover you. That comes uh-huh. that comes to be an inclusive. It's including something else. So in verse 12, we learn out it covers you. It covers you comes to say that you're obligated in a five corner garment or a six corner garment, and the reason is because in the five corners there's also four corners. Five has four also, but three corner garment is exempt. Three corner garment if you'll have a some triangle that will be exempt That's interesting. is this the famous Nachman um, could be could be yes I believe so I believe so yes okay so this is what we're coming out here these are this is uh, this is a little known pasuk everyone knows this pasuk but it, it, this is the complement to it and here it says four corners okay <coughs> So now, so based on the fact that, but the verse does not say if you're wearing it, this minute, maybe if it's on the table, but it's your garment, it's your four-corner garment, you have to put scissors on it. So this seems to have been the dispute between the two, the two people here in the Gemara. Because the next words that, that the visitor said is that you should quickly put scissors on here because the obligation is for every talus. It's for the garment. It's not on the person, it's on the garment. Any four-corner garment that you have, you have to put tzitzis on. That's what the visitor said. Why are, why are women not? Uh, why are they put from us? Uh, well, that's, that's, this is a whole... Uh, it's not time-bound. Well, it is, in a way, during the day. The, right, so the question is at night. At night, uh, there's no mitzvah or Shabbos. But that's, that's the main reason? Cause Cause, I mean, not Shabbos, uh, night. Because of the timing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I believe so, but we have to check up to be 100% sure. I wasn't going to speak about that uh, today. Okay, so now, so that's the back and forth that they had. They were discussing it, and it, that seemed to have been their argument, that the visitor said, the visitor, his name was Rabba Baravuna. He said, you have to uh, put on every four-corner garment that's in your house. It's an obligation on the house, on the, on the garments. It's not an obligation on, on you. And Rav Bar of Nachman, he said, no, it's, it's on the person. If I'm wearing it, then I have to put it on. Okay. So, can, like, it was, this was, uh, the guest came into Rav Bar of Nachman, and probably a very learned fellow yeah. in his own right. So yes. why wouldn't he even 
have realized this, or is this just? Uh, they were arguing. They had this argument. This this developed into a big argument. Uh, it wasn't just a question and answer. It comes out that there's two views on when, what you are obligated to put tzitzis on. And here's where the views uh, came but out. But the tzitzis have to be at the end of making a garment. You can't put a, you can't um, have a let's say a T-shirt. Let's say you slit it here so it becomes four corners. The the tzitzis have to you can't the tzitzis have to be the last part of the making of the garment. If you slit if you slit a t-shirt and you have four quarters, if it's slit halfway up, right. which means it means you need half of it to be uh, slit, because it can't just be like you make a little slit. Now you say, oh, have a corner here at the bottom. No, it has to be a corner means that it has to be it's gonna come halfway up. down has to be opened. Has to be a slit from halfway down. That's a corner. But uh, the the uh, uh, fixing of the CT to the four corners is the last part. And it has to be stage. after you have four corners. You, then you put right. the tits on. You cannot put the the, the tits on before you have four corners. Right. Which means let's say you get a tie that sits onto your t-shirt and then you slit it. That's no good. Right. Because we learn out because the the verse states right here you have to put it. Ta se you have to put you have to put it on after you have four corners. Right, and, and it would be invalid if you first put on the scissors. Okay, now, based on this, let's go to the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch is the code of law, code of Jewish law. And let's see how they ruled in terms of this argument. Right, how, how did, uh, what's the final ruling? So if you look at the bottom, here is in Hilchah's Tzitzis, and here it states very clearly in uh, Simon Yotes that Tzitzis is Choyvas Gavra here he states that the tzitzis is an obligation for every man. It's a personal obligation. And it's only an obligation when you're wearing it. And calls man she'en alei And if you're not wearing that garment, then pater me tzitzis. You don't have to put on tzitzis. If you have it in your closet, a four-corner garment, you don't have to put any tzitzis on it. Because it's a personal obligation. Based on that... So that's the exact opposite of what was brought down from upstairs. No? Well, no. Upstairs we saw that there's an argument between Rabba Bar of Huna and Rabba Bar of Nachman. Right, right. So what we see is that he's ruling actually like, who's he ruling like? Like the the the, the, the owner of the house. Right, like the owner of the house, right. Rabba Bar of Nachman. Right. He's ruling right. Only if you're wearing it are you obligated to put tzitzis on. Now, what comes out from that? So now, because of that, so the Shulchan Aruch, he. This, he wrote now, with this coded law, now that we got that down straight, it comes out, first of all, the biggest difference is you don't have to put scissors on any garment that you have, but you're not wearing. That's the biggest difference which comes out for halacha. But, uh, and, and w which means, by the way, that you could, you could have some garments lying around your house which don't have, uh, which have four corners, but no scissors on. Or else you would, ha you would be obligated to make sure every four-corner garment has scissors. In the instant you bought them. Means that you bought them, right? You would have to be obligated. The minute you bought them, then you have to start putting them on. That's when the mitzvah would start to put them on, put on scissors. Now. So it must be the same as shotness, then, isn't it? Yeah, what? That you know, uh, that it's a sort to have shotness only when you to wear it, as opposed to having it. If you have a jacket. Right. So it's like shotness. Shotness, you can't you wear can wool and linen together. So wool and linen, you make sure not to wear it together. Make sure you. But have then to you can own it and have it in your closet. You could own it and have it in your closet. Wear it. Right. You could own and uh, have wool and linen mixed together in a garment as long as you're not wearing it. In case you're wondering, so you might be asking, like, so where do we ever have such a case of this obligation, which is not an obligation, a personal obligation. It's an obligation on the, let's say here, it's on the talus. So where, where would you have such an idea? So Irving's giving uh, that a case with shotness would be a personal obligation. But I'll give you an, a, a case where we have an obligation which is not personal. The case would be a house, a house for a mezuzah. Put a mezuzah on your front door, or on every door. Put on every door in your house. Where, who's, whose obligation is that? Is that a personal obligation or, a, you know, an obligation on the person or it's on the house? Person. Because I'm going to live in this house. Oh. That's true. It's on the owner of the house. Yeah, but let's say if yeah, but if a guy lives there, right? So then he's not. He doesn't have any mitzvos, so he can't. Uh, he's not in the even in a question. How can how can an inanimate object have any obligation? So 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 Mike is saying right. So Mike is saying the first thing we mean to say is that it doesn't mean that the house has an obligation. 
but what we mean to say is that uh, there's, a, there's an obligation, which means, it, yeah, so you ha- we have to clarify this a little better. Good, it's a good point, it's a good question. So we'll figure out how to say this. The uh, obligation, it's not a, it's, we have to explain, what does that mean? It's not a personal obligation. It's, it's not a personal obligation to put a business on your house. Which means, I want to show you the, the, the we'll give you the but, difference. But if you're renting, it's still your obligation. Yeah, if so you, if it's you're not renting, your house. If you're renting after how many days? 30 days. Thirty? After 30 days, oh. then uh, then you have to put a mezuzah on because then it's already uh, yours. Till 30 days, we th- we say that maybe you move out. Hmm. Like a hotel, wouldn't. Right, like a hotel. A hotel wouldn't even, right, that, that would be, uh, right. But once you buy a house or you rent for more than 30 days, then you have to put it up. Right, now, so it is on you. you. It is personal, on you. It is it on is your on you. belongings. That's true. But I'll say it like this. I'll put it like this. The question will be, for example, when do you make the bracha? That's going to be the next words of Shulchan Aruch. When do you make the bracha? Um, right? We do a mitzvah. We always make a bracha before every mitzvah. Right. So when do you make the bracha of, let's start with tzitzis. When is the right time to make the bracha? When you're donning the clothes. When you put it on, right? Or maybe when you make the tzitzis. Maybe when you tie the tzitzis. No, it's a different, uh, isn't it a different bracha when you're making the tzitzit? But well, before we get to the, the, the text of the bracha, but when is the time, the right time to make the bracha? I would say when you put it on. When, just, before it's go- just before it's going on. Before you put it on. But that's only because you're, you're going with this ruling that the, it's a personal obligation. I have a difference. Yeah. I'm reading the, the Torah here, and it says the reason you're doing this is so that you may see it and remember all the commandments. That's the reason for doing it. So you should say the prayer when you see the t- the the t- t- Let's say it's on the table. Put it on. Let's say it's on the table. Right, but it's it's the act. Like it, I don't see it when I look in my closet and I see that all my garments have tits. Maybe, maybe not. But I see it when I take it out and I put it on in the morning. Now I'm seeing that I'm going to wear, and I see it. And I remember that there's tits on the corner. And I put it on. It's true. It's true. I, I now, but I just want to know what about if you have a pair of tits on the table, and it has strings. You tie the strings on on the table. Is, is that, uh, would you make a bracha on that? Would you tie it? So because, we're, because of this, this Gemara, and because of this, how we just quoted the, the law, and we said that there's no obligation to have it on your table. There's no mitzvah to have it on the table. So if there would be a mitzvah to have it on your, to every garment in the house that you have, you should put tzitzis on. If there would be a mitzvah, to put scissors on any four corner garment. You mean like a tablecloth? No. No, no, no. I mean, like something you're going to wear. But right? you're not wearing yet. So if that would be the mitzvah, then the minute you tie it, then you have to make the bracha right mm-hmm. when you tie it. Okay. It would be at the at the the tying part. It wouldn't be at the wearing part because the right. wearing is Makes really sense. wouldn't be consequential if we would have ruled like that side. Right. Makes sense. That way, the way the way you're putting it makes sense. Right. Is that is that clear, Mike? Is that? Mm. That, that if it depends what the mitzvah would be. If the mitzvah would be to have any four corner garment in your house, put tzitzis on, on the four corners. So then the minute you have a four corner garment in your house, you have to tie it, but you don't have to put it on. You just have to put tzitzis on. So the minute you put tzitzis on, you should make a bracha right then. But now that we rule that the mitzvah is to put it on, to wear it, it's a personal obligation on you. So now, the time that you make the bracha, is, is like Kevin's saying, is when you're actually doing the mitzvah. The tying itself is not the mitzvah. The tying, if you don't wear it, you're not going to get a mitzvah. You'll never get a mitzvah if you don't put it on. So therefore, we make the bracha when we put it on. That's the, the big difference that comes out for the halacha. And I'll tell you difference number two, which is very related. The second difference is, which bracha do you make? What will be the name of the text is what you bring up. What bracha will you say? When you're putting it on or making it? When you're doing the mitzvah of tzitzis. You tell me, what bracha will you make? This is the big question. It's different on our talit gadol. Okay. On uh, our regular, re- uh, on our talit kata? Let's say, let's say uh, a big one. Let's say, so what bracha you make to wear tzitzis? He commanded me to wear tzitzis. Which means, 
Lehezatev. I, I, I say it. I say it every day, but I can't. Lehezatev <laughs> to. No, that's grab. where. That's that's, 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 that's the big one. That's the talit. Yeah, that's what we say. That's what we say. That's what we say. In the morning, early. If I take off my my talikatan during the day and then put it back on, yeah. it's a different bracha. Yeah. Then you then you just say al mitzvah. Al mitzvah. mitzvah. Right. Okay. So the titatev betisi to wrap yourself. We in ra- the, the name of the bracha is to wrap yourself in the tzitzis. So that's only based on this coded law here, because the mitzvah is it's not just to tie any four corner garment that, that you have, because if that was the mitzvah, then you know what the name of the bracha would be to make tzitzis. It would be to make tzitzis. But that's not the mitzvah. There's no mitzvah to make tzitzis on any garment lying around your house. Rather, the mitzvah is to wear, to wear a four-corner garment. So therefore, because of that, that's why the name of the bracha is to wrap yourself in the garment. Because that's the mitzvah. The mitzvah comes out when we wrap ourselves in the garment. Okay, now let's, now let's go to mezuzah. Those are the, these are the two differences. When do you make the bracha and what the bracha is. So now, let's go to mezuzah. So, mezuzah... What, when do you make the bracha and what's the name of the bracha? When you're putting the mezuzah up, you make the bracha. Right. Um, when you're putting it up, that's true. Now, I have to think this through very carefully. What's the name of the, of the blessing? Affixing. Um, Likvoa mezuzah. To affix the mezuzah to my door, to put the mezuzah on the door. So now, what, how does that sound to you? What, what's the name of the mitzvah? There we are concentrating on the action of just putting it up. We're not, we're not saying that the mitzvah is, let's say, to live in a house that has a mezuzah. Right? If it, would be, if it was similar to, to, to tzitzis, tzitzis, we, we, we put it on. So that's the mitzvah, to put it on. So I would say by mezuzah, the mitzvah should be to live in a house that has a mezuzah. He's saying that, that, that the mitzvah of mezuzah is to actually put it, put, put it on the door. Yeah. So it could be that that's, that's the reason, because the mitzvah is that if you own a house, then then that's a, then we have to think it through a little bit. could be that's why we say to put it up. It's the mitzvah to put it up on the door. Okay, we'll have to think about it a little bit. Yes? Let's talk about, the, for a second, the Sabbath desecration in the in wilderness. Yeah. yeah. Boy, was he surprised, huh? <laughs> Picking up some wood? So, yeah. So but, like, listen, you can, you can do this, we're going to kill you. Or no, Hashem, because... Well, my, my question is this. Why didn't Hashem kill him? Why did Hashem tell Moses to, to tell the assembly to kill him? Well, no, so the, the truth is, uh, on, the, on someone who desecrates or does any of the big uh, sins, there is a, there's a court. There's a court, and there's a way to, to carry it out through the court. And there's witnesses, and we have to give him warning. So there's a way that it works in this world. Hashem doesn't rule uh, with, you know, he doesn't take, usually he doesn't do the punishment direct from heaven. There are certain instances where he will. For example, if there is no witnesses, if there are, let's say, someone did something wrong but no one saw. What he did with Aaron's sons and to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, that was... Or someone does a sin but no one's around to see, to give him warning. So then Hashem will say, Hashem just says, I'll take care of him. Because then there's no choice, there's no witnesses. So Hashem gives everyone what they deserve. It's not... So he can't carry it out in this world. So then... Hashem will take care of it. But usually, we try to work it uh, through this world, through a court, through witnesses. So what happened is that they found a man gathering wood on Shabbos. Now, evidently, right, he knew already that uh, we, we, we got the Torah a long time ago. The Torah said, don't do any of the 39 types of works. And one of those works was, it's an argument exactly what he was doing, was he gathering is a certain, uh, one of the 39 works is to uh, gather, make a pile. He was making a pile. We have to go into that exact uh, parameters of that. But uh, whatever the... The big big thing is that uh, with the witness is telling him, he's got to say it like, he he was, he, even though the witnesses told him it's not allowed, he, it was his chutzpah to keep doing it. That's why he was killed, no? Well, it wasn't, the, the, the problem wasn't that the problem wasn't the chutzpah, it wasn't because he was, it was so a desecration, it, because he was desecrated. Yeah, but if he without the chutzpah, is not, you don't get you don't get killed for the chutzpah. Chutzpah maybe is not so so nice, not so not such a good character trait. 
But the problem... But he wouldn't get killed for it without the witnesses saying this is us or it's be, not... Because you need a warning. Because God doesn't kill anyone. He always gives warning. He's always fair. Make sure everyone knows the punishment before, you know, it gets proper warning. So if he kept doing it, and I use the word chutzpah or ego or something like that... Like Whatever his reason prompted him to keep on doing it. But the, the problem was, as Mike said, but he, he kept on desecrating the shop. Right. After a warning of witnesses... If he one keeps desecrating it, then he's going against the Torah. Right. right. And they, they break down three as an argument in the Gemara what he was doing wrong. Either he was making a pile, or he was carrying outside when on Shabbos when there was no uh, Arab, it wasn't uh, enclosed, or he was cutting, or it could be he was cutting these uh, these branches off. So they told him stop cutting it. So he didn't stop cutting it. So what happened is that they went to Moshe. What should we do? So they put him. And they locked him up till they uh, they had to know which punishment they should give him. Which means that they didn't know which type. They knew that he. But they didn't. They didn't kill him on Shabbos. Right. That's interesting. I don't think that it's mentioned right. anywhere. That's interesting. We we usually right. We don't uh, we don't kill a Shabbos. We wait. The Gemara speaks about that in depth. Because throwing is a uh, it's got to be some sort of a pelting. Yes. Yes. Sounds yes. Sounds like a, a work thing. Right. So that right, the Gemara speaks about exactly right that that certain uh, certain of the uh, to kill would be uh, let's say they would pour, or to execute rather. right to pour let's say the hot lead down someone's throat uh, if he uh, if he had See, to get that's, that's an awful way. So Is this person Jewish? So that that would be cooking to to cook it up. It's got to be a Jew. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was Jewish. Sure, he was Don't Jewish. If he wasn't Jewish, then he wouldn't uh, get get killed because a non-Jew can can desecrate Zabbat. He's not commanding. It's not at all. desecrating for him. It's yeah. not desecrating. Even more than that, not only is it not. He would be. He, he's forbidden to observe the Shabbat. Right. A non-Jew is not allowed. There's two two big mitzvahs which a non-Jew has no no nothing to do with. He has no no part of the mitzvah. He has no part of learning Torah. He has no part of Shabbos. A non-Jew is not allowed to keep Shabbos. We don't let him keep Shabbos, which means that uh, you know if someone let's say they. Let's say a fellow who wants to become Jewish, wants to be a Megayer, we, till he actually converts, let's say he wants to convert, till he converts he has to actually turn on a light every Shabbos, because he's not allowed to keep the Shabbos till he becomes a Jew. Yeah, because he's not allowed to keep the Shabbos, it's only for the Jews, because it's our special sign that we have between us and Hashem. So basically, so this, this fellow, this fellow, they, they, put him, they put him away to see which punishment he should get. And then Moshe was able to f uh, clarify what the punishment was, and the punishment was to be stoned. So that was the, uh, that was the idea there. <clears throat> yeah, so that's the idea there. Was there anything else? Uh, well, it's so, uh, you know... Uh, Serious. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. You know, it's he's real. picking up some wood. It's real. He's picking up some wood. Yes. Going to you know, kill the guy? What if he's got, you know, kids? Is, is this, you know? It's real. Because uh, the malachas are real and, and, and all the mitzvahs are real. It's not it's not just that, you know, here's a mitzvah, you know, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do you that. Don't harm anybody, you know. It's a, but but it's, it's a reality. The halacha is a reality. The, the was this an actual event, or is this like one of those things where it says uh, Ben Sorry, where it never no, really no, no. happened, or no? But like it, it the, says like the a, wayward son. It says is, it's is a, a law. Lesson, right? We're gonna get to that. Is a law that happens if a son is not is a rebellious. That's a law that was given over. So the question is, did I it ever happen? So, uh, did yes. it ever happen? Is up to a debate. But this is a story that happens. This is, so it's, it's not just for a learning purpose. It says purpose. here they placed him in custody for it not being clarified what should be done to him. How is that possible? It wasn't clear what should be done to him. It wasn't clear which punishment he should get. So, which means he knew that they knew that someone who desecrates the Shabbos is uh, has to has to get one type of death penalty, but he didn't know which one. Should it be stoning, burning, the sword, or drowning? Drowning. Uh, choking. Uh, Hang, uh, are you going to be able to download this for a minute? Or you're, you're going to be busy? No, we're going to finish. We're going to finish. You'll join us for a minute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is Ben Chaim there? 
Well, whoever. No, no, when is, when is your shear over? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, five minutes. minutes. Time. So, yeah. Right. So yeah. we'll do another here. Yeah, so that was the idea there, that uh, it wasn't clear which punishment, because this is this is the first time anyone had ever desecrated the Shabbos, even though they were in the wilderness for a number of years. So this is the this is actually uh, actually how long? Does it say where what, at what point this happened? What year? No, actually it says that it uh, it was actually the second uh, Sabbath. It was the second one ever. It was the second one ever. No, I can understand. Oh, so right after uh, receiving the Torah. Okay. Yes. Right, so so he's saying that they only did one Shabbos. If they would have watched two two Shabbos, and then they would have been meriting to, uh, then, then there would have been a great, would have been a great thing. It said that if we would watch two Shabbos, and then Mashiach would come. The it's, whole, all the Jews. Yeah, all the Jews, all the That's Jews. Right. But the idea is that that it's 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 you know it's real. Every every mitzvah is a real thing, and every sin is a real sin, which uh, you know it's given to us from the Almighty. So. It has its real ramifications. It's not just it happens to be, you know. But if we understand, we have to see. We see the gravity of uh, of it, how real it is. Mm. It's given to us from Hashem Himself. So that's the idea of how, um, yeah, how how uh, it was such a grave sin, capital offense. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Okay. Fine. So we'll stop here.